Hello, my name is Craig and in this series of videos we'll be looking at how fuel can generate the energy we need to power our transport and also have a look at alternative fuels that we might be able to use in the future. Today though I'll be looking at how an internal combustion engine works but before that we have to think about what a fuel actually is. Well fuels are energy sources. We use them to run our transport, generate our electricity, heat our homes and to manufacture many products that we use in everyday life. Even our own bodies use food and oxygen as fuels to give us our energy. The most common fuels we use are coal, gas and oil, also known as fossil fuels. And it's from oil we can create petrol and diesel, which are the main sources of energy that we use to power our modern day transport. But once we put this fuel into our vehicles, how do we get energy from them? Well, we set them on fire, a process called combustion. So let's look at combustion in action. Here in this bottle I've placed a fuel called methanol. This used to be used as the main fuel source for early versions of cars, but it's now mostly used for drag racers and monster trucks. Let's see what happens when I light a splint and ignite the fuel. Now, energy is never lost, it is only turned from one form into another. Here the chemical energy of our fuel was turned into heat energy and light energy, but also the liquid fuel was evaporated into a gas, and it's this change of state that is key to powering our internal combustion engine. So let's have a look at the relationship between a liquid and a gas more closely. So what takes up more room, a liquid or a gas? Well, to help me find out, I've brought with me some liquid nitrogen. Now at room temperature, nitrogen exists as a gas, but to cool it down to a liquid, you have to cool it down to minus 196 degrees Celsius, which means if I take it out of this dewer, it will immediately boil once it's in the air around it. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour some into this butler flask and then place a stopper on top. Now if a liquid takes up more room than a gas, then nothing will happen. But if a gas takes up more than the liquid, then hopefully this balloon at the side will start to inflate as the liquid evaporates into a gas. So let's find out. So a gas takes up more room than a liquid, and it's this change of state when we ignite our fuel that allows our internal combustion engine to move. The engine is made up of pistons, which are attached to other parts of the car. A small amount of fuel is placed between each piston and then ignited by a spark, evaporating the fuel and pushing the piston outwards. This combustion is repeated continuously whilst the engine is running. So that's how we use petrol and diesel to power our internal combustion engine. Join me next time where we look at some of the side effects of using fossil fuels to power our transport and have a look at alternatives being put forward for our future energy needs.